Hey, welcome back to Home Studio Pro. In this episode, I'm going to try and explain basic microphone technique, which is something I'm very accustomed to, right? I've been around mics and broadcasting for more than 20 years now. It's very much ingrained in everything I do. But I realize if you're just getting into the whole home studio thing or presenting on camera, that basic mic technique might not be something you have any clue about, or you know a few things about it, but you realize there's lots more to it and you don't know everything. Don't worry, I'm here to cover all of that. By the end of this video, you'll know too much about basic proper microphone technique. And on that note, if you like this type of content, consider subscribing to this channel. I've got lots more stuff coming out. Also, by the end of this video, if it provides you value, maybe a thumbs up, that would greatly help me out. Let's begin with this. Microphone technique Technique starts with knowing the tool. This is a tool. It's a device like a golf club in a sense that I could hand a golf club to somebody who's never played. They wouldn't know what to do with it, but the golf club is just fine. You just need to know how to use it. Conversely, I could hand a bad golf club to a really good golfer. They'll know how to use it. They'll get the best and the most out of it. Now, if I hand them a really good golf club and they're a really good golfer like they're going to provide optimal and peak performance with it so understand that this is a tool it's only as good as the person that is using the tool in addition to the value that it provides does that make sense like it needs you to help it out to get the most out of this Let's start off the tips here with proper distance. Proper distance from your mouth to the capsule of the microphone. It's the hang loose distance. Wait, what do I mean by that? It literally is that simple. You know, hang loose, your thumb to your pinky. Put your pinky on the, basically where the, the capsule is, like on the grill of the microphone and put your thumb by about your mouth. Look at that. This whole time I've been demonstrating proper hang loose distance. Now. Does this apply to every single microphone in every single situation? Yes. Actually, mostly yes. More than not. So start here, right? I'm not saying this is perfect for everybody every single time, but start here. Start at that hang loose distance because if you're too far off mic, that's not going to sound good. And if you're all over the mic like this, like that probably didn't sound very good either. And I'm using compression. This is fully processed signal chain, but yeah, that would not have been good without a compressor in line. So the proper distance is important to get the right sound and for your microphone to be able to, yeah, basically hear you the way you want it to, the hang loose distance. Okay. You need to know your tool. You need to know the proper pattern and capsule that you're using here. What do I mean by that? The pattern, well, the pickup pattern, there's a couple different kinds. You'll hear cardioid, hypercardioid, circular, figure eight. This is essentially where is kind of the, the beam of listening of this microphone. That's the most simple way that I can explain it. A cardioid pattern is kind of shaped like a heart, kind of comes off the front of the microphone here, almost like heart shape. So it kind of has a nice little sweet spot. And by the way, that's what I'm using right now. Cardioid pickup pattern on this mic. It's actually got a selectable set of patterns. There's three different patterns on this microphone I can choose from, but this is kind of the one that gives me a nice little area to kind of navigate around. Again, if I go too far off mic, it's just, it's, it's not going to sound good, right? So know the pattern for your microphone. Also know where the capsule is. And I can't even believe I'm saying this, but this is a side address microphone, the Neumann U87 Neumann U AI. Some people might actually take this microphone. I swear I've seen this before. They'll talk into the top of it. Now, it hears me like in a direction this way, not up, but this way. So you have to know where your capsule is, what part of the microphone to speak into. Again, it, and, and some mics are obvious. Some mics are less obvious. Some people don't even think twice, but understand where to talk into the microphone, where the capsule is. Okay. Plosive prevention. What's a plosive? It's when I use a lot of P's or B's in the microphone and I make a popping sound that is going to 
make the experts' ears cringe when they hear them. And, and the way to create plosives is just to say a lot of P's back to back. Like Peter Piper promotes his podcast with pickled peppers, just anything with a P, uh, and, and also close to the mic because your mouth is spitting out some air. That air is disturbing the diaphragm, right? So, so how did I do that right now? How did I just say all those P's? Peter Piper would like to promote his podcast. I couldn't think of another P. Um, the way I'm doing this is to put my mic on about a 45 degree angle. Now, the other thing I could do is use a pop filter right in front of the mic. And for a beginner, that might be the best way to go. For my on-camera situation here, I prefer not to, just for me. But if it helps you eliminate plosives, then that's what you want to do. But popping my P's, see, that's a P pop right there. That's popping your P's. I'm trying to avoid that. So I have this mic on a 45 degree angle. That way, any of that wind and that air coming out of my mouth, it's not crossing. It's not, it's not hitting the mic. It's going to go straight past it. Now, the sound I'm getting out of this should be so similar and not very different instead of me talking directly into it versus me talking at a 45 degree angle. Again, I, I want you to see this big here. This microphone right now is pointed right past my face. It's not pointed straight on me. It's pointed right past my pa my face. I'm, I'm kind of, it's like, kind of like an X where it's pointed and where I'm talking are, are two different places. Again, that's the way to prevent plosives. I think in the best manner is just angle that microphone at a, at a 45 degree spot, 45 degrees off your center. Here's my center of axis. It's about 45 crossing me this way. Okay. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, next up here in mic technique is proximity effect. You might want it. You might actually not want it depending on the situation. But it's clear that the farther away I get from the microphone, uh, the less lower register it picks up. Conversely, the closer I get to this microphone, and even with compression here and EQ, right, it, it has a totally different sound in a world, right? Like that's that's how they do movie trailer voice in a world. You can get like this. So proximity effect, I'm ditching the hang loose distance to get really, and remember talking off the side here, I don't want to spit or throw plosives into the microphone. So I'm off to the side like this, but you can clearly hear the kind of sound that this makes right here. Or like a, like a radio station promo. You're listening to the drive, whatever. I'll never get hired for that. Anyway, do you want it or not? This is all part of mic technique. You can have your voice sound different by using the mic differently. But ultimately, you want to find that sweet spot and know how to live around it. Again, I'm not on a circular pattern. I'm not on a figure of eight pattern. I'm not on a hyper cardioid pattern. I'm on a straight cardioid pattern. So I can kind of move around. And even if I move this mic around a little bit, I'll be fine. But I'm generally living in this same spot right here. Find your sweet spot. Not only of your room, like where to record, but find the sweet spot of your microphone and typically stay there, right? If you move around, if you're somebody who's constantly moving around in the video like this, it's not going to sound good. Stay on mic. Stay in your sweet spot. One of the last points I want to make here is that compression is a friend, but use it responsibly. You can crank compression all the way up and your sound's going to be all crunchy. If you don't know what compression is, do some research. Um, that's not going to be here and now on this video, but compression essentially takes your lowest levels and boosts them, and it takes your highest levels and it brings them down. It kind of keeps you in a nice, consistent, happy medium of recording levels, right, that this microphone is producing. But again, it, it depends on if you're going to be shouting and then whispering or if you talk at a consistent volume the entire time. It'll help you figure out how much compression to use. My point is use it. It's a friend, but don't overdo it in your recordings. And that is part of mic technique, right? If I know I've got compression, I want to hear how it sounds. And, and lastly here, you must monitor the sound and the audio you're recording to have proper mic technique. There's no other way to know what you're getting out of this mic other than listening to it right now. I can hear everything I'm recording, so I know when I get close like this, I know how it sounds. I also know that when I do this, right, I push the mic way far away, the sound's terrible. I can hear it right now. The only way to know what you're getting is to monitor your sound in real time. 
It's as simple as that. And that's part of good mic technique is to know in real time, okay, if I do this, how's it going to sound? If I do this, how's it going to sound? If I'm talking in the wrong spot, how's it going to sound? Monitor your microphone, if you can, through your interface, through your computer, however you're set up, through your microphone itself. If you can monitor in real time, you're going to get more out of your microphone. So I covered a lot, but quite honestly, I think I covered everything you need to know about basic microphone technique. Maybe one more thing I could throw in, and I, maybe I forgot this, a shock mount. That isn't necessarily part of, of technique, but if this mic were mounted on the desk and every time I patted the desk, it would be making that noise. I mean, and this is shock mounted. Oh, that noise. Yeah, there we go. Like, it sounds like that. That's terrible. You do not want that. Uh, these are all little things you can do and learn about your microphone that that provide proper technique to have you and it sounding its best. All right. That's where I'll close things out. Again, if this video helped you, consider subscribing to the channel and thumbs up on this. I will see you next time with plenty more content. Enjoy.